that we can all have for later. Okay, well, welcome back. We are at day two of our college application boot camp. Um, our focus for today is picking up where we left off yesterday with um, our activities list, looking at BBs and then leading into our um, putting them into Common App form or UC form. We'll just check in briefly about that at the start today. And then the bulk of the time um, in the first uh, part is going to be about the personal statement and the two different um, structures that I work with with you, the narrative structure and the montage structure. So we'll spend some time analyzing other people's essays and looking for how they did montage and how they did narrative. And we'll use some new examples if you've watched previous um, personal statement uh, workshops with me. Um, I'll use some new essays this time. And so it's not exactly the same as what you've seen before. And then we'll have you spend some time independently working on coming up with outlines of two to three different possible topics for a personal statement. And I'll check in with each of you during that time. And then um, towards in the final hour, we will spend some time thinking about the teacher and counselor brag sheet. Uh, and how to do that and give you some time to work on that or anything else that you need to be working on to move your college application forward. Um, a teaser about other things that are coming up this week is um, we've got time to work on your why us supplements um, and gathering the information you need from the colleges that you're considering applying to to get ready for that and how to do that um, i've got a college panel lined up for friday for um, doing q a with students from university of washington from washington state from um, pomona college from a couple of other places loyola marymount um, and so we can ask them both about the application process and what it was like uh what it's like to be a first year student on campus um and we can continue to have q a anytime you've got questions about this process and um, how to navigate it okay so that's our overall for today um so i'm gonna pull up the slides and i've um added those to a few different places so if you are watching this at home the slides are in the um, homework uh, and slides folder. And I've added the links in every document to those different folders. So you should be able to find them. And let's go there. So, all right. Can somebody let me know if they're not seeing the front slide of the work bot book? Okay, great. Yeah, um, thank you for the willingness of someone just chatting me. Um, okay, so I assume that you are seeing that and um, here we go. So here we are at our college application boot camp. So I made a massive slide deck for this series of um, workshops in this boot camp. And so today um, I'm going to be going down to slide something like 73 ultimately um, for oh, slide 70 or so um, uh, for this session. But right now I'm going to go to um, look again at BBs. Um, and so uh, somebody here volunteered to share a draft um, BBs that they're working on, and I thought we could spend just five minutes or less um, working on what I call up-leveling um, the BBs list. So um, I can stop share uh, if the Philosophy Club BBs wanted to come do its thing. Okay. Um, may, that might have been a surprise, but here we go. All right. Well, so first of all, thank you so much for being willing to share. Remember that um, each of us is being vulnerable here. We are trying our very best. No one is perfect. No one's better than another. We are each really bright spirits on a magnificent journey. And um, each person feels like they're inadequate compared to others. That's like 
you know, part of the human condition, except for narcissists, but <laughs> most people feel that way. So if you see something in this BBs that makes you start to feel like you're, you're not enough or you don't have enough or whatever, um, try to calm that, that fearful little child inside of you and say, it's going to be okay. I have really lots of strengths and skills and there is a school for me. So um, thank you so much. Let's uh, see about philosophy club. Um, is there any way to make it slightly bigger, the part that you did and not my all my comments? I can't remember. Is there a way to hide um, comments? We did it last time. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe see. just, yeah. Does that work? Great. Sweet. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, great. Well, so uh, tell us a little bit about this club. So what we might be looking for before we read the actual words. Well, uh, uh, Richard Montgomery High School Philosophy Club, which I joined in 11th grade. Uh, as the name, you know, states, we just kind of get together with uh, our philosophy teacher. Now I'm seeing your college app list. Talk about philosophy. Thomas, go back yeah, to your activities. Hold on. There you go. Beautiful. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So we just, you know, talk about philosophical ideas, stuff like that. Sometimes go over stuff that we're um, talking about in class. Okay. Yeah. All right, so right away on the what I did column, which is the one on the far left, I'm seeing that you um, did start with verbs in each section, which is much appreciated. You can see how easy it is to scan that. Um, and bolding them really just highlights uh, each verb and it helps you go back later and see if there's anything you might want to up level or if there's a more specific verb that would work. Um, nice. So. Um, the first question I have is about attended. Um, that's a relatively passive verb, which might be what it means for you. Like maybe you just went and sat in the back of the room. I don't know. Um, but could you say anything more about what it is that you did in, in that club? Like what was, what was your, how you participated? Yeah, I, I could say, I guess like I participated in the discussions. Something mm -hmm. like that. Right, because you that only have pretty... a when you, you know, this is the like full fleshed out thing, right? But when you try to lift from this into the 150 characters for the common app or 350 characters for UC, it can be nice to like launch right into what is a, you know, an active verb of the things that you really did in the session, right? Okay, you attended, sure, pretty much. I will get the fact that you attended the meetings from the fact that you're saying that you were a club member of, of that club yeah. in the position and the organization. Okay. So it's not that you don't need to write it in here, but I'm sort of, sort of thinking about when you go to be putting it in the shorter version, maybe don't lead with attended. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah, I'm seeing that you went to as many meetings as possible, which is great, but maybe not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about that? What's probably like the most important thing that you did if you were going to have to choose for your 150 characters? Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. I would say, I guess this. this. Okay. Opened your Opened mind, mind to much like different mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. What are some examples of ideas? I'm just curious, actually. What does a philosophy club discuss? Uh, I wrote some down over here, which is why. Let's see. Oh, sweet. I got it. Got uh, it. The mind body problem, free mm -hmm. will. Uh, there was something I forgot exactly what it was about. We were talking about like a certain idea. Uh, it starts with a P. I don't know. I'll okay. Up later, but it starts okay. with the letter P. Okay. Okay. Cool. So you get the idea that that's just the kind of comments that I would be saying. And some yeah. of it is about what you're going to put in your 150, but some of it is because we're trying to get at mm -hmm. um, why this was important to you and how it might connect to other areas of your life. And so there I might look at your far column um, about how you applied it to other areas. And I might also look at your values and lessons learned, which is in the middle um, area. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so you can always learn from someone else. Um, how did you learn that? What's the story there? 
Uh, well, there's not there's not like a specific example, but you know, I would you know think something about a certain idea, and then someone who almost always, I mean, I was definitely not the most talented uh, in philosophy there. So when they would like, you know, speak their mind about an idea, I would definitely gain insights that I didn't have before. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. So you might want to, you know, add that gaining insight factor. Um, and if there were an example, um, that would be appropriate to try to try to access, right, and put it in there. Again, not for your activities list, but potentially to add to an essay or really more than anything. It's like, how are these, how are your experiences contributing together? So mm -hmm. when you guys um, work with me on next steps from BBs, you'll see that what, what I'm trying to do and what I hope you will do is look at how all of your activities and all of the lessons learned and all of the connections that you made between the one activity and other things you did in your life, how they, how they go together and what kind of aha or what kind of insight you might be able to have, what kind of so what you might be able to have as you think about um, going forward and what you want in college. Mm -hmm. So part of it is the task completion of filling it out but part of it is um you know what's the larger story uh and so that's what's going on there cool um let's see thomas was there a certain part here that you were wanting feedback about that you were feeling a little stuck about um i guess more of you know the impact mm -hmm. or, or how i learned what i applied because other than like you know just like using what I learned in philosophy and other classes. I don't know how to say that, you know, I use. What do you think? I mean, so like there were conversations about the meaning of life kind of thing. And so when you said lived and thought differently yeah. about society, how did you think differently about society? Like what, what was different for you? Hmm. Uh, just kind of like, I, I think I wrote that because of like the free will uh, problem that we were talking about. Mm. We talked about how like, you know, there is no answer really, but some people think that we do have free will. Some people think that we don't and everything is decided uh, without our control. So it kind of like made me question, you know, how like, like, do we choose what we do in society or is it already chosen for us? Stuff like that. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I would be making a note, right, the free will conversation. And so mm -hmm. can you be thinking about or do you remember now, right now, while you're thinking about it, um, some aha moment that you had after that of like, whoa, that is not the way I've been thinking about things. That means X or that means Y for the world. Well, I would say I was left confused a lot of the time uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in this club and in this class. But I mean, with that definitely came a lot of, you know, aha moments about, you know, things I didn't think about before, like free will. I never even thought about that before mm -hmm. this class or this quote. Okay. Are there, are there, so we don't need to belabor it, but I would just be thinking, and maybe you don't need to, you don't know today, but the fact that we're having the conversation now in a few days or whenever you might have like, an, oh, that there's an example of that free will, um, yeah. surprise that I had or that insight or that different idea. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, obviously this is way longer than it's going to fit in a 350 or 150 character thing, but it is very, very valuable mm -hmm. what you've done here to really kind of try to flesh out, um, flesh that out. Let me see one more thing about that. You were asking about areas where it's impacted the rest of your life. Um, mm -hmm. Did you notice it falling into conversations with family members, for example? Anything there? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, yeah. um, you know, you certainly could talk or mention that. And then I'm wondering if it has affected um, any other area of work or school. Um, anything you've other done this classes. summer? Go ahead. Like, uh, I guess my theory of knowledge class, yeah. And then, of course, okay. philosophy class. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. So more academic that. application. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
and maybe you've discussed it with friends and family. Have there been any times when you've been having a conflict with somebody in your family and you're like, oh, this is a conflict about free will? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, with my mom. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember a certain example, like, like a specific example, but whenever, I mean, we don't always disagree, but a lot of the times she'll have different viewpoints than I do on like philosophical ideas. Mm hmm. Yeah. My siblings, though, we have pretty similar ideas. Okay. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I think this is one of those deep things that may or may not show up by the time you write the college application, but that you likely will continue to make connections about these big, deep questions, you know, throughout um, the rest of time. So, yeah. Okay. Um, great. I think I think uh, there's a lot of great here, and we've had a discussion about some things you might add. And um, how about from the group? Are there things you want to add in the chat or by... Um, uh oh i know i have a question for the group you've you've uh read through this a little bit you've heard um uh thomas talk about it could you please put in the chat or unmute and share what are the top values or what is the one top value that you feel like thomas is is communicating here in this this uh, philosophy club example Because for with each BBs, we're going to scan for the active verbs, we're going to look for impact and connections made, and then we're also going to look at what are the values that seem to come across. So I know it's risky, but take a stab. What's a value that you see here? Okay, I'm going to pause the recording. I think, yeah. So we had people comment on um, valuing other people's perspectives or um, being really engaged in or interested in understanding uh, complicated things. Um, we're still searching for the one word for that. Uh, so sometimes when we ask people from the group to say what values are coming forward from a BBs or from an essay, it's not what the um, author intended. And so then the author can can see uh, how to add that more in. But this time, I think you were very clear, and perhaps because it's about philosophy, um, you were you were clear about um, the value of discourse, right? And And discourse is the word for that kind of given change. Um, so maybe value, the value is, is discourse. Mm -hmm. um, not the one, but one of the words that could work. Um, great. Uh, group, any questions, suggestions, thoughts? Okay. So some, thank you so much, Thomas, for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. Those, some of you will have longer pieces for your BBs and some will be shorter. And that's totally fine. You know, really, the, the there are two main goals of the BBs. One is to get out the what I dids um, so that you can lift those for your um, activities lists. And then the other is to get at the insight um, that you are gaining from participating in those activities and reflecting on them over time. And so when you look at all of your activities together, sometimes some themes start em emerging, some values start emerging that you can then use to inform your essays. Okay. So um, will you please privately chat me right now and let me know where you are with your BBs and then your activities lists. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting, right, philosophy really, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. So I've got some people who've been around the block before and so are able to be um, 
done with their BBs and are working on their writing it in the required formats. Nice. Um, and the BBs are working on getting finished. And I totally support if you could work on, you know, finished draft, right? Like good enough, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if by the end of today, you send me off a, um, uh, a BBs to look at, I would uh, love that. And really, um, once you've gotten out the BBs in general, uh, I would switch, like send me off a draft and then switch to doing the uh, 150 or 350 character version for a while um, while you're waiting for me. Um, and don't try to obsess about the BBs being perfect because they are kind of like drafts for all the other work. Okay. So um, I think it's, it's awesome and um, you can be kind of moving one forward and then keep the other one going so that um, hopefully uh, by midweek um, you'll be at a, a place where you, you aren't working on those so much anymore. Okay, so my goal is um, for you is to have BBs done by the end of today and um, activities list, uh, at least going a good draft. Okay. If that doesn't seem possible, um, please send me a private chat about that because it's important that you have some reflection time on your activities before you start really digging into your, um, personal statement writing. And, um, the personal statement writing will be so aided by the fact that you're doing this, this BB stuff, it'll really, really help. Okay. So um, anything else on that topic before we go on? Okay, um, take a two minute stretch, move, break, or uh, whatever you need. We're gonna be moving into a different topic about personal statements. If you're still listening, something you could be doing is um, finding your brainstorming uh, work that you've done in previous times. Um, yes, having your BBs nearby and then also having those brainstorming exercises we did once upon a time. Um, if you are having trouble remembering, they were in, there's a workbook that you have called Personal Statement Launch, some of you, and others of you um, have it uh, in the slides for today and let me help you find where that workbook is so if you go to um like in the okay i'll share screen okay so if you are in the slides for today and you go back to slide seven um that had the homework in it there is there are the three folders and the th um, folder that has um, the essay brainstorming drafting and revising that has in there a bunch of things that are about personal statement and but there's also this workbook copy of personal statement workshop student workbook um, and most of you have a copy of this somewhere and if you didn't already have one here it is okay and this is going to be uh, this is a place that has all the brainstorming exercises in it um, it has the common app prompts it's going to go with a lot of the slides that we're going to show today but it doesn't but i have new slides so it's like um some of it is is a repeat but some of it is is not but the tools are the same so you're looking for your um your brainstorming activities this identity and home and islands of personality those kinds of things and then we are going to talk about montage structure we're going to talk about narrative structure and this workbook if you want has um some um options for uh, how to do the work. So um, I am going to, whoops. Um, so that's where I am. Any questions, feel free to put it in the chat or um, speak up about what's going on. Uh, for UC activities, there was a question in the um, 
was this uh was this yep. workbook emailed to us or was this this is the one from the old the other time it is the one from the other time and it's also in it there are links to it lots of places so i did um i'm sorry i'm showing you this so it was emailed to you the the one in the email it says links to folders for the workshop and in the folder about essay brainstorming is a copy of that workbook yeah also you have this i'm pretty sure um from the, the previous workshop but if you don't feel free to pick it up there again i got it here thank you awesome anybody else have any questions about how to access it all right Feel free to chat me anytime. Um, I um, okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna head into um, we're gonna head into personal statement work, um, and some of it will feel like a bit of a review. But I've checked in with people, and it feels like it's um, gonna be fine to have a bit of a review. And we're gonna do some new essay analysis, so. Um, hopefully it'll feel helpful. Um, if at any time it's not helpful, feel free to chat me and say, you know, I'm going to be working on this and let me know uh, when it's time. But I think this is really crucial stuff. Okay, so big idea is that your personal statement, remember all of the different components of the application, their job is to tell the story of you and the different parts of you. And so your transcript is there to tell about your courses and grades and your teacher recommendations and your counselor recommendations are there to tell about how you show up at school. And you've got your activities list there and you've got your personal background information and then your chance to talk with them basically and tell Tell you tell them who you are is through your personal statement and um, there are two different structures that I suggest people consider adopting one is a narrative and one is a montage in order to share about you um, so schools are looking for what are your skills what are your values what are your qualities what are your insights that you are going to be bringing to um, our school and remember yesterday when we were pretending to be admissions officers and we were looking at people's applications and saying, is this a young person who we wanna have on our campus and how would they fit? One of the ways that we looked for how they fit with us was their personal statement. And um, there are these two different structures. The narrative is the one that we typically think of when we think of a college essay where someone has done something dramatic or had something dramatic happen to them or they've gone on a big trip and they've learned you know, the lessons of life, et cetera. And they tell a story with a beginning, a middle and an end about what happened to them. Um, so that's a typical what we think of. Um, and actually more common these days is something called a montage essay, um, where you organize your um, lived experience through a theme. Um, and the difference between the two is um, one narrative, you've got kind of like one event or one a big challenge that's happened and you tell about the challenges, the effects of that challenge, what you did to um, address the challenge and what you learned from it and it's told in chronicle chronological order usually like there's you know first this then this that kind of thing whereas montage um, is one common theme and then different examples from time and you have freedom to jump around and so it's great as a structure, um, especially if you don't have some one big challenge um, in your life and um, you totally get to choose and you also can um uh you can try out each of them so you could try a narrative you could try a montage so um as i said the montage structure is um from filmmaking and it's like little snippets like you see in this photo little snippets of people's life that all together put to uh, show the picture of of the person or the story so next um, the purpose of this is to um, share, again, the skills and qualities and values and interests that you will contribute to their campus. Um, 
it helps you show several different parts of you um, at the same time by connecting them with one common theme. And uh, it's important or helpful to choose that focusing theme because you can't discuss every single aspect of you in your life, um, but you can show a few important things through that um, single lens. So this image I really appreciate with the montage where you've got that common thread, like you could imagine this being a necklace or a bracelet, and the thread itself is the common theme. Um, like today I was talking with a student about potentially using curiosity as a common theme, or you could use something from uh, one of the brainstorming exercises, like I love, I know, or home, or identity. Um, uh, or you could use um, career, um, you could use uh, funny things about me, <laughs> you know, um, or family, food, you know, some common theme, and then have like beads on the bracelet or the necklace are the examples or the um, scenes from your life that you want to be sharing and um, you're infusing each bead then has a, a value that is connected to it. So you've got the common theme on the thread, you've got the beads, the examples, and on each bead is a value um, that is important to you. <clears throat> Questions, thoughts, feel free to shoot them out in the chat. All right, so we're gonna look at an example essay. And um, if you haven't looked at this one, I hope you will go back and look at it, but we're not going to do this one today because it's on the previous um, workshop. Um, but we are, when we look at this next example, going to be looking for um, the author's values and insight and their vulnerability and their craft, okay? So keep those, maybe take a note so you can help me remember that's what we're gonna be looking for values, insight, vulnerability, and craft, because those are components of a solid um, essay that um, helps, helps people get to know you and get to know the story of you. All right, so um, let's take turns if you're willing. I guess since, okay, I'll just, well, I would love to have somebody volunteer to read with me. I'll read the first. Um, page and then if or the first slide and if somebody could take the next slide that would be awesome so get ready and see if you can okay so this is a um an essay that see if you can figure out which brainstorming exercise this was coming from or stemming from this one is uh, we're just going to call it the food essay um and here it goes since 1941, my family has had an odd tradition. Three days a week, my great grandfather Pop brought home ribs. After dinner, he'd go around the table inspecting each plate, making sure each rib was stripped down to the bone. If he found one morsel, you couldn't be excused. Pop believed that before you could leave the table, you had to finish your ribs. Is there someone willing to do that one? Number second slide. I can read it. Thank you. Um, this lesson has stuck with me. Whether I'm staying up till two in the morning to figure out the radius of convergence of a power series or identifying solutions to countless concerns issued by my school district, I strive to finish my ribs. But this is just one of many lessons food has taught me. During Thanksgiving, instead of going around the table to express thanks, family writes. Um, Maybe my family. My family writes notes on the tablecloth, the same one for the past 26 years. You'll find thoughts from my dad, but only until 2004, or corny jokes from my stepdad, but only until 2016. And you'll read family is everything from my great grandmother, Nan, but only into 2017. Thank you so much. Anybody willing to do this one? Okay, I'm gonna read it and maybe you're off driving, who knows. <laughs> My family is far from perfect, but it is 
in the presence of a tablecloth where time freezes and I begin to feel an unfamiliar sense of stability. It's where my brother Noah told my dad he loved him after six years of not communicating, where my mom sat next to dad without a lawyer by their side, and where my family has gathered for every birthday at the same restaurant since I was four. To me, eating may means celebrating culture, people, life, and I celebrated Nan's life by trying a dish I'd feared, I have feared since my first Passover, gefilte fish, a, a stuffed seafood concoction. It's not the taste I remember clearly, but rather how it began a cascade of tasting other Jewish foods, chopped liver, beef tongue, pickled herring. In the time since, I've realized gefilte fish is more than just the unfamiliar food tucked away in my great grandmother's fridge. It represents the opportunities that arise from trying new things. Anybody? Because gefilte fish is everywhere. In some cases, gefilte fish has meant testing different locations of bins to minimize, sorry, I'm trying, having to, okay, yeah, to minimize food waste in a school with no cafeteria, or researching how biofortification can create an allosteric inhibitor reducing the release of ethylene, thus increasing the shelf life of produce. The lessons I learned through food aren't just limited to traditional meals, though. For the past five years, I've sold Otter Pops, a type of popsicle, at Spokane's annual race. Every year, my business grows. I hire new employees to manage new, new stands throughout the course to sell thousands of pops. But while my popsicle empire expands, one thing remains true. I take a break and amid the chaos to eat my own Otter Pops. It's the same reason I play volleyball with friends after a long week of school and swim in the river with my football teammates after we finish con conditioning. I take tremendous pride in these things. In fact, I find them necessary. And when I cook, I transform a part of raw earth into raw culture. Preparing steak enables me to remember my great grandfather while eating it reminds me of its destruction to the environment. This is how I understand the world. I cook to discover myself. I eat to learn about the world around me. But we've become a product of the industrial food system, leading us to believe food is just another commodity and rendering us unable to identify that it exists at the seed of our very our, our very identity. This is why I want to study anthropology and public policy to restore the bond between humans, food and culture, and to create the policies that will ensure those who are food insecure have the same opportunity to do so themselves. I have so much left to eat in the world, so much to change, so much to create, and even more to impact. I'm hungry. Let that sink in a little bit. Can you think or did you notice any examples of their um, values or their craft or their insight or their vulnerability? Um, feel free to put them in the public or the private chat. What did you notice about this kind of essay versus an English class essay, for example, what what's what kind of craft what kind of writing moves is this person using? Okay, online group calling you to share thoughts. I'll share one thought. This comes from one of the brainstorming exercises. Oh, yeah. One comment is you can kind of picture the text as it transitions through. Um, yeah, right. There's lots of um, lots of imagery, right? You can imagine them actually sitting at that table or you can imagine him um, selling the Otter Pops. Um, uh huh. It appeals to emotion. Can you say more about that? I'm interested in in what words, what kind of kind of moves the author did to appeal to um, emotion. We learned so much about him and I didn't even notice. That's such a great comment because it was like easy reading, right? Like it was interesting. Um, but then he, um, 
that then then he told you a lot of things and it wasn't right like um okay like when sort of towards the end he's like putting it all in there like i play football and i uh otter pops same reason right in this one he goes um one thing is i take a break to enjoy eating the otter pops and it's the same reason that he plays volleyball after school and he goes to the river with his football teammates and um etc right so you kind of like get all sorts of scenes from his life but it's just in a sentence or two and so um you know, I want to let you know that this is not his um, first try, <laughs> right? This is not the first draft of his essay. He went through multiple outlines. He went through multiple drafts to get to this place. Um, okay, who else has some noticings? I really like what I'm seeing. One other comment was um, there are a lot of hooks or interesting parts that kept you wanting to read it. It was very varied, wasn't it? It wasn't all on the same topic. There was a lot going on and it was just like sprinkled, right? Um, yes, it was all about food, but you get the sense that he's like a uh, science geeky person about things. And you'll see that in his activities list. Like I don't need him to write it all out here because what he did is in the activities list, or it might be in a supplemental essay also where he's expanding on a particular, an extracurricular activity of particular importance or whatever. Um, cool. Well, another thing I really want to point out is that you do not have to have complete three to five sentence paragraphs in these things. Did you notice that he um, has a lot of these one liners throughout it, um, right? He starts with a one liner. Um, he ends with a one liner. And I'm not saying that you need to copy that format, but I just I noticed yesterday when we were reading through the common applications from the um, students, Ethan and Kayla and Brandon, that um, Brandon had one big solid piece of writing and didn't have paragraph breaks and wow was that hard to skim and um, Ethan and Kayla had paragraphs and one of them had like breaks between the paragraphs and that was much easier to read and can you imagine when you just have the one line it's like your your eye goes to the first line of everything when you're skimming something in a minute or two minutes or whatever. And so um, it can be a strategy uh, that you're certainly allowed to use in this format, very different from you know, your English class essay, right? That would not be uh, desirable in that format. Anybody else, some comments on this particular food essay? Okay, um, so the next slide is showing that um, this food essay came from the brainstorming exercise called I Love, I Know. Okay, so in when he, this person was doing their brainstorming, they were listing out all sorts of things they know about and all sorts of things they love. And maybe you can see that um, a lot of the things he mentions in this essay are things that he loves, like his family members, um, and uh, food and his activities. Okay, but it wasn't easy to get here. I don't know if you caught in the paragraph about the Thanksgiving table, um, where he's talking about you don't you'd see my dad there at this time, but you wouldn't see him later. You'll see my stepdad there, but you won't see him later. Um, and so there's a story there, right? There's a journey that this young person has been on that's been hard. He hasn't always had the same dad in the house or he hasn't even had a dad in the house. He's had changing family members. And so he might have chosen to tell a narrative story of like, this is who I am. First, this happened, then this happened, then this happened. And now this is who I am today. Um, but it's harder to do that successfully and to stand out and to help a college get to know you unless you've had something um, a big challenge um, that you've overcome. And in that case, then you've got the narrative one. So we'll do that next. But this person tried out narrative and then said, mm, I think the montage might work better for me. Let me go back to my brainstorming exercises. Let me go to my I love I know and see what I've got there. OK, so um, this slide is an awesome resource. Um, if you go to 
um, like each one is a link, okay? And they're each of the different brainstorming exercises that we did. And let's see if I click on career, it's gonna go to my guy, Ethan Sawyer's college essay guy um, website, where he's got examples of um, montage essays based on each of the um, brainstorming exercises that you did. And so you can click there and, and go down to it. Okay, so, and there's an example essay or two for each one. So um, if you're looking for inspiration or you just want to explore different ways that different people have done it, um, this, this slide will help with that. Thoughts, questions? All right. So don't lose it. <laughs> no, it's going to be in this massive uh, slide deck that we've got. Um, and so feel free to chat me. Uh, okay, so that was montage structure. That's where you've got the thread and the beads. The thread is the common theme. In this case, it was food. The beads here, right? Let's go look. Um, he had beads where he's got, um, first he's got the, uh, stick to my ribs bead or example. Then he's got um, some school district work that he did example about um, food. Then he's got the Thanksgiving table example. Um, then he's got um, the tablecloth and the not communicating and the family challenging stuff. Then we turn to food as celebration. So that's another bead or example. And um, then we've got um, more specifically about gefilte fish and Jewish food. Um, and then we've got the otter pops example. Uh, and then um, we've got sort of his like waxing, uh, his, his academic interest in food um, and his environmentalism. Okay, so that's another sort of bead. And each of those beads uh, has a value on it associated with it. And so you could go um, through and think about what values come out here. So right now in the chat, um, think about and put, you can publicly or privately, what values about this young person come out in this food um, montage essay? What are some values besides food? <laughs> what are some deeper values? Doesn't have to be perfect. Just what what stands out. Feel free to unmute and share too if you'd like. Okay, family. I agree. Family definitely did. Culture, family, community. Nice. Oh, tradition. Yeah, right. And sort of grabbing for tradition, like wanting tradition. Yeah, feeling nostalgic about tradition. Mm -hmm. um, I also thought that kind of like a geeky, in a good way, like geeky, academic-y kind of value came out, uh, the way he was kind of listing a lot of sciencey things about food and connections to that. So I that I got that sense from it too. I don't know if you if you did. Um, okay, well, great. Um, we have gone through the, um, that's the montage idea. And here are some links to some more resources to help you think through that and how to tie them to the extra, uh, to the essay brainstorming activities that we did. Um, let's see, we are gonna take a five minute break and we will start again at the top of the hour. Um, if I'll stick around. So if you've got any questions or things you want to talk about, I'll pause the recording and we can do that. Okay, and so um, what I'd invite you to do uh, before we go on to talking about narrative is to either on your computer or on a piece of paper, um, sketch out some potential montage topics or examples or anything that you want to respond to that we just um, thought about that montage structure okay um 
we learned about it having a common theme and then examples of that theme and then each example having a value. So sort of what comes to mind, just capture those thoughts. I'm going to give us a, I'm going to set a timer for three minutes to do some thought capturing and then we will go on to narrative. Okay, do, 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 it's time. <laughs> Okay, another 30 seconds and then we'll move. So montage, what are some possible topics? What are some possible examples? What are some possible values? Topics meaning threads or strings of a necklace, bracelet. All right, getting ready. Okay, so um, just like with our food essay writer, um, you can try out both a montage and a narrative, even with the same kind of big idea, right? Um, maybe it was a food related challenge or maybe um, a, the story has a lot about food in it, um, but it's uh, told in a different way. I would think, I mean, I know that the food essay guy um, had some real challenges with his family and he really was at a place in his life where he needed to write about it so he did some writing about that um, what it was like to grow up with um, two different dads and then no dad and different you know family members and grandparents and all those relationships and the complications with mom and parents being divorced and all that and so you know we encourage you to do some of that writing if you can have some time to do that and get it out but it's not always the most successful um, personal statement it can be um, but it doesn't have to be but that doesn't mean it's not important to take this moment to do some writing about it go for it okay um, but then after you've done it maybe you'll discover you want to do that or maybe you want to do um, a montage but let's explore what is that um, what is the narrative structure what might that look like Okay, um, and so the big idea of a narrative structure, like I said, it's often told chronologically and you share what was the challenge 
and what were, what were the challenges that we faced or tried to overcome? What were the effects of that challenge? How much did it stink? <laughs> um, what, what happened as a result? And then um, there's the part about what, what you did about it um, or what others have did about it. But since this is a story mostly about you, it's like, what did you do about it? And then what did you learn? So, and the proposal is in an effective narrative essay to have about a third uh, about challenges and effects, a third what I did about it, and a third what we learned. And um, there is a brainstorming exercise associated with this that I'd recommend everybody do if you're wanting to do a narrative essay um, to do this feelings and needs exercise. Um, so you start with at least three challenges um, that are likely related to each other, or they don't have to be, but in this, it's most effective to have these things be related. Um, what were the effects of that? Um, the uh the um purpose of this is to differentiate your experiences from those who went through the same challenges that you faced so what's really your what are the effects for you um, and then the feelings um, this is where the uh, uncommon connections are made, right? Like sometimes with challenges, we don't often think about, well, what were we feeling or what happened? Um, uh, wh what were, what was our experience? Not just like I broke my leg and it hurt, but you know, I was feeling inadequate because, um, uh, I usually am able to hold myself up and walk without help. And so the feelings that I have underneath it are help share your humanity. So we want to get to that. And then we want to get to the needs. Um, what was happening for you in that challenge? What kind of needs were you um, seeking to fill? Um, what were you longing for at that time? Like with the food guy, I could see that image of the Thanksgiving table and he's longing for the family to all be gathered regularly. And he noted that certain um, dads weren't there at certain times and you could tell that he was really um, wanting to feel connected and he felt sad about um, people not all being there at the table. Um, what I did about it, um, what did you do to either change or improve your situation, and then the lessons and values, which could be connected to the things in your BBs about the lessons learned, um, etc. But what what is the big aha or how you're connecting this experience to next steps in life? Okay, so I invite you, if you're thinking of doing that, to, to please do this feelings and needs exercise. This is in the workbook, past the section on montage, you get to the feelings and needs and to the narrative structure and it's right there for you. Um, and uh, here's a list, if you'd like that, of all sorts of different feelings, all sorts of different needs, because uh, sometimes it can be really hard to put a word to um, a sense that you're having or a feeling you're having. Okay, and so then we're going to look at an example of a narrative essay. And um, last time we looked at one called um, what had to be done, which is an essay um, that Adrian did. And in, in your materials, there is a set of both the brainstorming exercises and then the drafts and outlines um, of an essay um, from Adrian. And it's that, it's that essay about um, what had to be done about uh, his childhood and um, how he came to be who he was. Um, but we're going to look at this one. It's a new one about makeup. Um, and if you're willing to um, give something a read, why don't you just send me a chat? Because I don't want to have too many pauses, but I'd love, love, love to have you take a turn reading um, just so that we, you know, keep our interest up and it's not so boring when I'm talking on and on. So, okay. Um, here, let's see if we can see what the challenges were, what the effects were what they did about it um, and what they learned. So looking for that, but then also looking for vulnerability, craft, um, skills and insights, okay, and values. Um, see if you can take any notes about where those things show up in this essay. Okay, I'll do the first page and feel free to chat me if you're willing to do even a sentence. I'd really appreciate it. Awesome. Um, so here we go. Uh, in eighth grade, I was asked to write my hobbies and career goals, um, but I hesitated. Should I just make something up? 
I was embarrassed to tell people that my hobby was collecting cosmetics and that I had wanted to become a cosmetic, cosmetic chemist. I worried others would judge me as too girlish and less competent compared to friends who wanted to work at the UN in foreign affairs or police the internet to crack down on hackers. The very fact that I was insecure about my hobby was perhaps proof that cosmetics was trivial and I was a superficial girl for loving it. But cosmetics was not just a pastime. It was an essential part of my daily life. In the morning, I got up early for my skincare routine using brightening skin tone and concealing blemishes, um, which gave me the energy and confidence throughout the day. At bedtime, I relaxed with a soothing cleansing ritual, applying different textures and scents of liquids, creams, sprays, and gels. My cosmetic collection uh, was a dependable companion. Rather than hiding it away, I decided instead to learn more about cosmetics and to explore. And Anna, you're willing to read. Thank you so much. However, cosmetic science wasn't taught at school, so I designed my own training. It began... It began with the search for a local cosmetician to teach me about the basics of cosmetics, and each Sunday I visited her lab to formulate organic products. A year of lab practice taught me how little I knew about ingredients, so my training continued with independent research on toxins. I discovered that safety in cosmetics was a contested issue among scientists, policymakers, companies, and consumer groups, variously telling me that there are toxic ingredients that may or may not be harmful. I was very frustrated. I was frustrated by this uncertainty, yet motivated to find ways of sharing what I was learning with others. Research spurred action. I began writing articles on the history of toxic cosmetics from lead in Elizabeth, Elizabethan? Mm -hmm. Elizabethan face powder to lead in today's lipstick and communicated with large readership online. Positive feedback from hundreds of readers inspired me to step up my writing, to raise awareness with my peers, so I wrote a gamified survey for online distribution discussing the slack natural and organic labeling of cosmetics, which are neither regulated nor properly. <laughs> Something. Defined. You want to continue? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, nice. um, at school, I saw opportunities to affect real change and launched a series of green chemistry campaigns. The green agenda engaged the school community in something positive and was a magnet for creative student ideas, such as a recent project to donate handmade organic pet shampoo to local dog shelters. By senior year, I was pleased my exploration had gone well. But on a recent holiday back home, I unpacked and noticed cosmetics had invaded much of my space over the years. Dresser top and drawers were crammed with unused tubes and jars. Once handpicked with loving care had now become garbage. I sorted through each hardened face powder and discolored lotion, remembering what had excited me about the product and how I'd used it. Examining these mementos led me to a surprising realization. Yes. I had been a superficial girl obsessed with clear and flawless skin. <laughs> you want to take another turn? Sure. Um, but there was something more too. My makeup had given me confidence and comfort, and that was okay. I am glad I didn't abandon the superficial me, but instead acknowledged her and stood by her to take on an enlightening and rewarding journey. Cosmetics led me to dig deeper into scientific inquiry, helped me develop an impassioned voice, and became a tool to connect with others. Together, I've learned that beauty of a meaningful journey lies in getting lost. I've heard, I've learned that the beauty of a meaningful journey lies in getting lost for it was the meaning. Maybe it should be and. Yeah. Uh, it's, it looks like it maybe has a little error in it. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Um, Not your fault. <laughs> was there and getting meaning? lost for it was the meandering that I found myself or something, oh, okay. some it. sort of ending like that. There must be a typo in there. Thank you. Um, so reflecting on this, um, what did people notice? Did you notice any um, values or vulnerability or craft? Or did you notice challenges, effects, what she did about it or what they did about it?
I'll say the first thing I wanted to tell you about why I included this one in particular is that the previous one we've looked at together is called um, the one that's called what had to be done um, is really a very, you know, very touching, very amazing story of a young person whose, um, you know, father was imprisoned or deported and how he basically supported his family and raised his brother and single handedly did all sorts of amazing things at his high school. Um, and some of you may have that experience. Absolutely. Uh, maybe not that one, but you know, something really hard that happened to you. Um, but here's an example of a narrative format and something that, you know, didn't seem life or death. So I thought that this was potentially a valuable essay to share um, with people to see um, how you can maybe use the model of challenges and effects and what you did about it and what you learned on something less life or death. Um, okay, so I was waiting for some chats. I didn't see them yet. Maybe they're coming through. Did anybody, what do you notice about this makeup essay? Um, I noticed that there's like a super clear change in the author and like chronologically too mm -hmm. um i forget what she said superficial i think let me go back to uh-huh um yeah i think she said that she was like at first she thought the makeup was made her superficial and like shallow mm -hmm. um and then through this stuff and like digging deeper into it she realized that she could appreciate that like part of herself or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah, I just thought this format is the narrative, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just a pretty like, I don't know if obvious is the right word, but. Uh-huh, but like first sense. this happened, then this happened, yeah. then this happened, right? Mm -hmm. But it isn't exactly like, um, ex exactly chronological, it is, right? But it's not like a boring story. It's kind of, yeah. it's like the evolution of her um, being the, ad the, uh, what do you call it activist that she is today it sounds like she really became an activist over the course of time but had this kind of obsession with makeup that ended up connecting her to her activist self so mm -hmm. she values um both makeup and advocacy um and really it seemed like did anybody notice some values in there like i'm just i'm happy to hear from you about your values one thing that's really standing out to me seems to be like even though makeup is about kind of concealing things right but it seemed like she was really valuing honesty and like being true to yourself um which is kind of a contradiction sometimes when you think about what makeup is trying to do but uh, so that was kind of really interesting to me um that she was working on that and um anybody else have anything they're interested in or noticing I notice in this one that there aren't any single line. Uh, okay, there's one, one single line, but there was something more too. That's like a one line uh, transition sentence that's, that's nice and she's not overusing it, right? Um, and it's talking about really, you do get a sense of kind of who she is and what's important to her. Yeah, even though she's talking a lot about makeup. Um, and it, do you feel like it's engaging, like comparing the two, the food one and this one, do you feel like it was equally engaging? Any thoughts on that? Okay. All right. I look forward to talking with you guys about this in person too. I know it's hard to be on a, uh, a recording. Um, so challenges right that she had an interest that wasn't kind of popular or didn't make her feel like other people valued her perspective and it felt like um kind of anti uh yeah anti feminine um right in in the in the world that that's the message she was getting and that she should be sort of hiding herself but instead she um tried to dig deeper and see if she could find something that connected those two worlds connected the more academic more um uh, career side of people's interests with um, her sort of just love and passion. And so um, that was the challenge. And that what she did about it was to do that research and to mount those campaigns um, connecting to the uh, activism. And sounds like uh, they learned lots about themselves, um, about it's okay to, you know, speak up and, and let your 
freak flag fly like we used to talk about right like just own who you are and move forward into it so it's kind of an uplifting um, narrative and uh but it's not you know something terrible didn't happen so it can ha can can work if you're looking for a super challenge based essay this what had to be done i recommend to you um, and here's some analysis of it um, and so you can look at that okay and so if you were interested in doing the narrative form then you could outline out for yourself some i'm going to go back to the montage outline in a second but i'd love you to take that um, couple of minutes like we did with the montage and think about what might work for you in this form is there any um, narrative uh, that might uh, work for you thinking about your brainstorming exercises thinking about your values what could be here okay so i'm going to give you a two minute work time to just take some notes about that either in your workbook or on a piece of paper that you're using for this purpose All right, that's the end of the two minutes. Um, okay, and so now we're gonna be entering a time where you can have a work period where I'm gonna be checking in with people. And before I send you off, I'm gonna review the um, slides here that are also connected to the workbook um, that has a personal statement in the title, but you can also just do it straight onto a piece of paper or onto a document that you're creating um, with these, with the slides helping you, okay? So we just were thinking about the narrative, and so you might have um, a challenge and effects. And so when you're outlining for the narrative form, it's really very a very simple form. You've got the challenges and the effects and you bullet, 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 bullet. And then what I did about it, bullet, 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 bullet. What I learned, bullet, 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 okay? Um, so that's, you'd start with that outline. And then if you've got that outline, I would encourage you to try um, one to two more topics, either uh, also narrative or try a montage. Um, and so um, I'm going to go to montage next, but following from the narrative outline, the next slide and the next thing in the workbook is about how you would do a first draft from that outline after you um, check it with me. Uh, and so um, that's there for you if you want to go ahead and start that today. Um, but here is the tool for doing a montage outline. Um, with this one, you could use this kind of table if you'd like, or you might want to just do it free writing on a document. Um, but you list out a potential topic, like uh, the example was food, so we'll look at that one next, or I used curiosity earlier today. Um, a common theme or a common thread 
Um, and then you think of the examples or the scenes from your life that might connect to that common thread or common theme. And then think of the values that are associated with that example. And then in the notes, you could add significant you know, like details about the example, if you want to, um, you can start doing some of the writing, remembering what were the components. Um, and then later, when you and I look at it together, we can think about that topic and whether it's stretchy or not. And what I mean by that is like, does it have legs? Does it have an ability to tell lots of parts of yourself like that food essay where he was telling about his football and his volleyball and his family and his um, science work and his advocacy at the district. And you know what I mean? There were a lot of different things that he could cover in that. So it was very stretchy. And was it uncommon? You know, not everybody's talking about ribs in the opening thing. Um, not everybody's connecting gefilte fish to science research. So, and it was something that only he could really tell. So that's what made it uncommon for him. So we're gonna be looking at that. So when we're going to choose what kind of topics to end up writing a draft about, that's what we'll be looking for. Which one um, might have the most uh, uh, energy or legs or uh, places to go. So here's an example of a montage essay that goes with our um, food essay, right? The examples that are the beads on the thread um, and the different values that are associated with them. And then he or you could take this outline, first share them um, with me and we'll talk them through and see which one or two you want to really go through for your first draft. And then a first draft would be just a simple, clear opening and then four to seven paragraphs, maybe one for each example, or maybe you put them um, in together, and then a placeholder ending. So you don't really wanna worry too much about the opening and the closing right now, but just get out the um, big ideas of the examples and how they connect to the theme. Okay, and so then we've got narrative, and then um, this slide offers a chance for you to check through or you could request feedback from a peer. I did send the phone numbers and the email addresses to people who are willing to share. And so you could contact somebody else from the group or you could um, contact a family member or me and ask for feedback on those things. And so your next steps are to, um, if you haven't already, uh, you know, do the brainstorming exercises, but I think most people have. Um, go find your brainstorming exercises because they'll definitely help you. If you're thinking about doing narrative, do the feelings and needs brainstorming exercise first. And then um, I'd like you to outline two to three possible topics um, that uh, might work for that. And I think it should be actually the previous slides. So it says use the next slide, but it really means use the uh, previous slides um, and then submit them for a check or review um, with me and we'll just uh, talk through the possibilities. Um, we didn't talk today about doing a log line, but you can click there and find out what that's about. And it's basically like an executive summary of your topic and the different parts. And I'll talk with you about it in our small group. And then I'd like you to do a first draft and then check back with me. Okay, so um, this is going to be your project. If you're really not anywhere close to this, um, pause the video and go back uh, and work on those things you need to work on before you get here. If you're really like not even close on your BBs, then um, maybe that's the best use of your time um, because I want you to be pretty, pretty well down the path of doing some BBs before you really think about um, your personal statement topics, but um, it's up to you. I mean, I think this is a really great work time um, for you to do this outlining um, and to share it with me. Okay. So I'd like you to do try and I'd like you to try two to three topics. And here's why. Usually your first topic is that thing that you just have to get out. It's your first idea. It's a good one. Um, but often the one that you end up settling on is like your third or maybe even your fourth um, try, like the food guy, like tried the, the narrative, the challenges and ended up with the montage after a few different um tries at it okay so i'd like you to do that and then um, connect in with me and uh, what i'm going to do is maybe i'm going to do that thing yesterday unless anybody has a suggestion of where everybody has their breakout room and then i'm in the 
main room and I'll pop into your workspace. Does that sound good to work with you? And you can chat me at any time if you're ready for me to, to talk to you. Okay. Any questions? All right. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to keep the next steps up there. I'm going to, any tips about the breakout rooms, what it worked or didn't work yesterday? Okay. The recording. Okay, and so um, welcome back from the break. And our next topic is in case you have not done yet, asking your teachers for recommendations or giving your counselor information about yourself. Um, we're going to spend a little time working on that. Um, so uh, we were just talking about how um, at one school, the counselor already asked um, students for what they call a brag sheet. Um, and pers Thomas, would you be willing to say like what your what your counselor asked for? What were the highlights of it? Yeah, sure. Um, there was a question about like awards or any like um, certificates or uh, like achievements that you've gotten from school, things like that leadership positions. Um, I'm actually going to try to open it right now to okay. get information. So for sure, the counselor in some schools will ask for that. Some schools will ask you to fill out that information on Naviance because the counselors will use it there. Um, but they, every counselor writes um, a recommendation for every student on their caseload, believe it or not. And so if you're at a large public high school, which I know many of you are, your counselor may or may not know you personally. Um, and so this information that you give the counselor uh, is your best shot at getting them to write about something that's actually about you, <laughs> not just about the school in general. Um, and so in this slide set, um, which uh, for those of you who are just joining us, um, the slide set is the same as it was for yesterday. I'm going to try to keep the slides all the same for um, the week. And uh, so this is on slide 111, <laughs> um, the teacher counselor brag sheet. And this um, title is actually a hyperlink. Um, so if you want to click there, you can go to some a document that's a resource about creating a teacher or counselor brag sheet and then um, the difference between them so thomas do you have it do you want to whenever you whenever you have it feel free to interrupt me okay um, so the counselor is going to ask for overall things about how you show up at school. So um, your activities that you do at school, if you are on any teams or any clubs or um, any leadership positions, or if you do, you're just a nice person to see in the hallways, that's fine. Whatever you do at school, the counselor can include those kinds of things. Um, teachers are a little different. So when you send teacher brag sheet it's totally fine to focus on the things that um, like you sent in the counselor letter but you might want to add or i ask you i suggest that you add in some specifics about ways that you contributed in that particular teacher's classroom because um, when the college is looking at the teacher recommendation and the um, counselor recommendation like we saw in yesterday's session when we were looking at the common app um, components uh, from Ethan and Kayla and Brandon, um, we saw that the counselor letter did a different thing from what the teacher letter did. And the teacher letter focuses on what's happening for you in class, how you show up in class, what were particular projects you work on, um, how you participate, uh, you know, maybe the quality of your writing. I mean, you know, I, it depends, but how you show up in those micro interactions and forecasting how you are likely to participate in the college classroom. Um, so that's the difference between the two um, letters or brag sheets or whatever. Um, 
it can be pretty much the same thing. And you could just add in for the teacher a few um, bullets. And I know that it can be definitely a letter, but I was reading somebody's draft yesterday and I felt like teachers are so busy that it might be super helpful if you um, if you haven't already written it, just don't worry about it if you have, but if you haven't already written it to focus on like adding bullets or um, a numbered list, something where a teacher can just like pull out uh, the most important things and it's easy for them to look at. Um, so questions, I'll, I'll go ahead and link to this, but um, feel free to shout out some questions or things in the chat here. All right. Um, okay, and then the one thing is, so uh, it asks you to think about like who's going to write your recommendations. So I'm if if you haven't thought about that, you think about people who can tell about um, what you do in the classroom in a way that um, could help you stand out, you know, and if there is nobody that you know, then um, talk to me and we can brainstorm how to get um, an additional recommender who might be able to say more about that. Um, this this can be a challenge for some people to think through who to ask, and I'm happy to help you with that. But in general, um, you ask uh, a teacher and then you follow up with this information about your um, about where you're applying your academic strengths, ways that you can contribute in the classroom, et cetera. And the last thing is to make sure that you write a handwritten thank you note. So if you've already done the asking, um, it's probably not quite time to, to do the thank you note until you know that they've done the, <laughs> done the recommendation, um, but definitely do do the thank you. And um, one thing is I know some students have had problems with teachers not doing their recommendation in a timely way. Um, and so just like I'm asking you to have your application components done, you know, two weeks before the deadline at the latest, um, I, I would recommend for, for you to do that with your teachers when you're asking them, you know, say that the deadline is like weeks before it actually uh, <laughs> is due or, you know, be checking in with them to make sure that, um, you know, just say thank you so much again for writing the recommendation. I've, you know, I finished my component and I'm really excited about it, you know, like, you know, and feel free to check in with me if it doesn't seem to work. Um, okay, so like on this one where it says uh, teacher recommendation request, and it says, I think my academic strengths are ABC. You certainly can do that in paragraph form, but I think it's just easier to read if you kind of go, I think my academic strengths are boom, boom, boom. Um, and you can be as specific as possible. Uh, and then specific things I hope you discuss in the letter. I think that's um, something that and what I remember most about your class. Those are the two unique things that a teacher can contribute. So I would definitely recommend um, that. And then finally, you definitely can attach your activities list or a resume um, if you'd like. Um, but again, the teacher recommendation will focus on how you were as a student in their classroom. So um, questions about that. I'd like to give you some time to, to brainstorm that if you haven't already done it, um, or we can move on to other things. What are your, who's got some feedback for me? Okay, oh, Thomas put some great stuff in the chat. Right, and specific examples. I do think that that's important. Just like on this on this sheet, it says like um, my strengths are and um, my personal strengths are, and I would agree that it would be helpful if it said something like, and what are the examples of that? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me something about yourself that I do not know. What sets you apart from other students? Okay, those are all really good questions. I'll. Uh, Oops, try to capture those and put them in the document. Okay, all right, well, I won't talk and you do a little brainstorming on that for a second and then we'll switch gears to other things. 
All right, I'm going to add that in here. Below here in this document, this is also a template for teachers that they could potentially use as a recommendation form um, because some teachers don't know how to do it. So if you've got somebody who's relatively new to teaching, there's that um, recommendation form uh, that um, from that that uh, it was recommended from a particular school. Another school counselor. That's a really important question. I'm just looking, I'm gonna interject for a second. The counselor says, is your academic record an accurate measure of your ability? Why or why not? Um, the If you have anything you need to explain about your transcript, um, you uh, your counselor can affirm whatever you write and you're going to have an additional information section where you can do that writing and we'll talk about that in our supplementals um, on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, but giving your counselor some of that information can help because a college will really um, value that kind of, you know, additional information if it comes from the counselor and if it comes from uh, you alone and doesn't come from the counselor, it would be fine, but it's nice to have um, corroborating evidence. Um, great. Okay, I'm going to bullet those. All right. Okay. All right, um, could you please, I'm thinking that Thomas has done this largely, and I know Delia has done this, so um, Thomas and Delia, uh, I am totally fine with you um, using this half an hour for to because you've set it aside to work on finishing, to doing your outlining, to doing your um, BBs, to doing your activities list. Those are the three things, or sending me anything that you're ready for me to uh, have feedback about um, and work until the time's up of what you've uh, of you set aside. Or if you um, need to go do something else and you're going to come back to it later, I'm also good with that. I am going to, I think, say, let me uh, put up the homework and then Tessa stick around and I'll, um, I'll uh, go over kind of what, what we did. Um, Cool. Okay. So um, back to this thing, we'll go to that was our okay, so the homework, if you click here, that's the place where the homework doc is. And it's also in one of the um, folders for this workshop is homework for each day. And basically, it's like, you know, move the project forward. And ideally, um, just to maximize the time of this week, um, you would try to finish wherever you can be with your BBs um, by the end of this day two session. Um, try to try to really push through. Um, it doesn't have to take a long time. It doesn't have to be a dissertation on the meaning of life, but um, getting out at least the what I did and the impact I had and you know, if possible, things like lessons I learned and um, connections to other things. But, you know, it can be high level for now. Um, and then if you are ready, um, try the activities list for the Common App or the um, University of California, if that's appropriate to you. Um, and I would love to see those things in my email or get pinged that they're in our shared folder. Um, if you're like, I just need something different to do, um, there are example essays that you can read. We looked at two example essays in the session today, and there are two additional ones in the slide. So there are four essays all together. But if you click on that link in the homework doc, um, there are bunches of other essays, so many other essays. Um, and so on your personal statement, if you um, 
uh, could think about two to three possible topics and outlines. They don't have to be detailed. They don't have to be a draft um, that you could shoot my way so that I can help brainstorm that with you so that you can get into the drafting um, in the next 24 hours. Um, that could be cool. Um, and then the optional things are to work on your teacher counselor brag sheet. Um, once you've done your activities list, you might want to work on or as part of your working on your activities list, you might want to work on a resume. Um, and we looked yesterday at where the uh, links are to learn more about that under schooling doula links in the top right corner of your um, council more under student schooling doula shared resources. There's a folder with that. And then, um, oops, reading example essays is on there twice. All right. And then, um, oops, always you can be um, working on uh, additional things, but I doubt that's the issue <laughs> today. It seems like everybody's got plenty to do. Okay. Um, so that's the homework for tonight. Does anybody have any uh, particular thoughts, questions, insights? And I guess you have until tomorrow afternoon. So, you know, homework for this next period until we meet again. All right, um, I am going to stop the recording. Thank you so much and look forward to um, tomorrow together. And then I'm going to...